All right, quarantine hair, don't care. <laughs> um, here we are, daily dog challenge. I think it's 742 <laughs> or whatever day of quarantine it is for you. Uh, for us, I think we're in week four. Um, so I think this is 26 or maybe 18 or I don't even know how I'm counting anymore, guys. <laughs> I'm trying. Um, so today I thought we would go over, um, there's a sport that um, at our dog training club, New England Dog Training uh, Club dot com uh, dot org. Um, and we're the oldest AKC obedience club in the country. And there's a sport there called rally. And for those who are not familiar with rally obedience, it's um, taking a bunch of uh, walking patterns and competition obedience footwork and putting it in a course very similar to like an agility course and it's a timed course so it's moving obedience so what i do in my manners classes and for fun and for challenges is to take skills that your dog already knows and kind of line them up um taking some uh <laughs> taking influence from competition obedience and from rally obedience and making it fun for the layperson. And so at the end of every single manners class, uh, at the end of my six week sessions, if you've taken those classes, you know exactly what we're going to do. I want you to write down all the skills that your dog knows and like sit down, touch, stay, leave it. Um, and put those either on an index card or, uh, what I've done today is I took my daughter's sidewalk chalk and I made a course throughout our block and so I'm going to take captain through um, I'm gonna show you guys first what this looks like and then I'm gonna take captain through and maybe you guys can do something like this too in your neighborhood um, I was also inspired by um, my daughter and her friends had all made like little challenges for themselves throughout the neighborhood at each of their houses so my daughter Ace went through to her friend Maddie's house and Riker and Leo and they had all done like little chalk mazes for each other. So like leapfrog or hopscotch or uh, balance on a line or uh, walk like a dinosaur, run really fast. So they did these things for each other to keep each other sane through this horrible time. Um, and it was really cute and it was so great to watch everybody get happy and go outside. Um, so I thought I would do something like that combining what I do for a manners class and what we do at New England Dog Training. Um, with my dog captain here using my daughter's sidewalk chalk. I now have to order her more chalk. Sorry, kiddo, if you ever watch this, mommy's bad. Um, but um, maybe it'll inspire you guys. So let's go through this course and see what it looks like. I don't think I'll be able to record this with captain, um, but I will be doing this later because it's gonna be real, you guys aren't gonna be able to see it. Um, if I'm walking with my dog or if I have my seven-year-old recorded, it, it's gonna be very shaky. So I'm just gonna go through what I have here. So I'm coming down my stairs and the first thing you see is start. Okay. Turn left. Okay. A halt. And a halt is just having your dog sit either on your right or your left in competition obedience. If you're a rally student or a New England dog student, um, make sure you're having your dog sit on the left. Otherwise, just have your dog sit. That's all it's asking for. You stop, your dog sits. So you can work on auto sits. A leave it. So you can either have something on the ground for them to leave or you can um, actually do the, the fist in the hand exercise. I'll put a little link um, to leave it in the video. Uh, any five tricks. So it could be sit down, it could be touch five times in a row, it could be spin, however complicated you want this to be. We have a crosswalk, might as well use it, right? So here, we're going to follow the arrows. This yellow one is going back towards the house. So we're going to turn and it says, wait, well, it's an intersection. So you should do that anyway. So I don't see anybody coming. So we're going to cross. And again, rally obedience is just following the arrows. This one, tell your dog to sit. One step, sit. Okay. Sit. You get to the next sign. Two steps, sit. One, two, three steps, sit. One, two, three. Fast pace. So we, <laughs> yeah, this is why we're not doing this with the dog. Sit and down. Do do. Okay, walk up to the next sign. Any trick. So it could be roll over, it could be spin, it could be sit. Depends on how distracted your dog is. Follow the arrows. Wait. All right, we're gonna cross this street. There's no crosswalk here. It's a quiet street. 
my neighbors all think I'm super insane because I'm talking to myself and writing on everybody's sidewalk. 10 tricks for three treats. So count out three treats. We're gonna walk. Spin, which I always have going to the right. You could do it however you want. Twirl, I always have going to the left, but again, whatever you, or you could interchange whatever you'd like. A front, this is an obedience term where your dog comes from your side and sits at your front straight as possible. Um, if you can just get your dog to sit next to you, perfect. You could do a down in front, you can do a sit in front, whatever you would like. Um, if you're working on your obedience, then go ahead and do that. 360 to the left. So my dog would be on my inside if I'm working my dog on the left and I'm going to walk a big circle, keeping my dog on the inside and then a 360 to the right. So can I keep my dog on the outside? Sorry, you guys are getting dizzy. Here's a down. Now, depending on where you are skill-wise, you might need to ask your dog to sit first and that's okay. Um, if you wanna really challenge yourself, see if you can just drop them into a down. Here we go, we're gonna keep following. I have an asterisk here from before. So you can do five tricks that we did on the way up. You can ask for a leave it, because we have an asterisk. We have a halt. Basically, I was getting lazy at this point. My hands were starting to hurt from writing. Now we're gonna turn right and end. So many birds. How far does this go? Huh? How far does this go? Oh, we're just going to go this way and back home. He really hates that cat. Kevin. Hi. Remember me? Let's put you on the left. See how you're doing. Ready? And see if we can cross safely. Come on, Joe. I'm not sure if you'll be able to do this. Ten treats, ten tricks, three treats. One, two, three. Down, sit, touch, touch, sit, four, cap, sit. Ready? Good boy. Down, sit, spin, twirl. I'm sure that's more than ten, right? I think so. Down, 
Wait, uh oh, down, leave it. Good boy. I'm trying not to get a cheeky. You're doing a good job. Oh, that's better. Good job. Yeah. Twirl. Twirl. It's really weird for me to ask you to do all these things on our walk. So give it a shot. See what it's like for you guys um, and report back and let me know how it's going for you. See what kind of tricks you guys can do on your walk. See if you can set up a little um, obstacle course for yourself. If you don't have a sidewalk, if you live somewhere small or if you have a little apartment or you don't have chalk, you can write your things out on index cards and you can tape them down. If you're fortunate enough to have a little backyard, you could use that. Um, you could use your driveway. You can move some furniture around and do it in your kitchen. Um, you don't need a lot of space to do something like this, and it's a good way to drill and practice things without actually having to go outside and, or without actually having to go to a class right now. Um, so it's a good way to kind of think outside the box and move your training in a different uh, with movement. Um, again, moving obedience. And I'm not making any sense because I got two hours of sleep last night. So I'm really sorry. Um, I think a lot of us are anxious right now. Um, so we're doing the best we can with the tools we have. Let me know how you're doing. Bye.